Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, what is dialectical behavior therapy? So dialectical behavior therapy, or DBT, is a modality that was created by Marshall Linehan in the 1980s. And it's specifically designed to treat individuals with borderline personality disorder. And even more specifically, the characteristic of suicidal tendencies that's sometimes observed in borderline personality disorder. Now, DBT is a particularly complex modality. It has a lot of different components that were borrowed from a number of other theories and modalities. It is a program-only modality, although there are versions of it, I suppose, that can be used by an individual, like in private practice, for instance. But generally, this is thought of as being used in a program. So this would be a treatment team delivering DBT as opposed to just one mental health clinician. So as I mentioned, this is a fairly complex modality. I'm going to go through some of the key elements, but as with all modalities, there's a lot more when you look at the details of the techniques and the strategies. So from a client's point of view, DBT has three main activities. Individual therapy, usually about two hours a week, group counseling, which is about an hour and a half to two and a half hours a week, and telephone coaching, which would be available 24-7. Now, from the therapist's point of view, you have those three components, and also there's a therapist consultation component. Now, there are five functions to DBT. The first function is enhancing capabilities, and this is really skills training. This skills training has four modules known as the four modules of DBT. Mindfulness, distress tolerance, emotion regulation, and interpersonal effectiveness. Usually we see with the enhancing capabilities function, this is met through the group therapy and sometimes through the telephone coaching. The second function is generalizing capabilities. So this is met usually through the group therapy component and involves homework and practicing skills. The point of this function is to apply the skills learned in the first function to real life circumstances. The third function is improving motivation and reducing dysfunctional behavior. And this is usually met through the individual therapy component. The fourth function is enhancing and maintaining therapist capabilities and motivation. And this is met through support, training, and encouragement to the therapist. So this would be the therapist consultation component. Now, DBT is unusual in that a lot of modalities don't have a function that addresses the possible effect on the therapist. DBT recognizes that borderline personality disorder can be difficult to treat from the therapist's perspective. So there are concerns about burnout and fatigue, and these are addressed in the modality. The fifth function is structuring the environment. And this really has to do with the treatment team. So you have a primary therapist, and they make sure that the elements of treatment and the functions are satisfied. And of course, there are other pieces to this as well. Now, dialectical behavior therapy is based on three theories, biosocial theory, dialectical philosophy, and behavior therapy. So the biosocial theory has to do with emotional vulnerability, the invalidating experiences that we believe may lead to, or at least contribute to, the development of borderline personality disorder. So what we get from the biosocial theory is this idea of regulating emotions. This is the emotionally focused influence on DBT. Dialectical philosophy is really about the tension between acceptance and the desire to change. And this tension is experienced by the client and by the therapist. So the idea behind the dialectical component of DBT is to seek balance and to acknowledge that this is a reality that has to be dealt with in therapy. Now the last component is behavior therapy. And here we see a lot of the techniques from other behavioral modalities. And when I refer to behavior therapy in this context, I'm talking about all behavior. So this is what somebody does, what somebody thinks, what somebody feels. All those components are here. And what we see with DBT is we have cognitive restructuring, 
components of exposure therapy, adaptive responding. So a lot of the components that we see in other cognitive behavioral therapies like rational mode behavior therapy and cognitive therapy. So now I'm going to cover some of the strengths and weaknesses that we see associated with DBT. I'm going to start with the strengths. The first strength is that DBT was created to treat borderline personality disorder. As I mentioned, borderline personality disorder is thought of as challenging to treat in some instances. And I think we need more modalities that are designed to address personality disorders. There are a lot of modalities that treat depression, anxiety, substance use disorders, OCD, and we certainly need modalities to treat those disorders. But there aren't a lot of modalities out there that specifically are designed to treat personality disorders. So modalities like DBT are important and we need more of them. Another strength is that there's a group component with DBT. Now you could also look at this as a weakness and I'll talk about that. But blending the individual therapy with the group therapy is clever and I think using the strengths of both of those modalities to treat a disorder makes a lot of sense. And the last strength I'll cover here is the support for the therapist that we see in DBT. I mentioned earlier that a lot of modalities don't have this and DBT really takes an honest look at the effect of therapy on the therapist and helping a therapist to maintain effectiveness and to cope with feelings in the end is helpful to the client. So I think this component represents a real strength of DBT. So now for some of the weaknesses, limitations, or criticisms of DBT. The first is that DBT is conceptualized as program only. And I talked about this before. It's difficult for an individual mental health clinician to effectively deliver this treatment. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing, but whenever a modality becomes complex or somewhat impractical, that just gets in the way of treatment delivery. And this modality is fairly complex. It makes sense why it's program only, but that complexity and that program only nature can get in the way of delivering treatment. The second limitation would be the durability of treatment. So when we think of DBT, we know there's research out there that supports its effectiveness, particularly with individuals who have borderline personality disorder. But what we don't know from that research is how durable that treatment is. Do the effects of the treatment last? We simply need more research to understand this better. And this brings me to the third limitation. Really with DBT, even though it has been shown the research to be effective with borderline personality disorder, the research is still quite narrow. There have been a few other areas that have been explored like substance use disorder and bipolar disorder, but generally the research has small sample sizes and is limited to individuals with borderline personality disorder and to mostly female participants. So the research is narrow, and this is a bit of a concern with DBT. Now the last limitation I'll cover here is that in some of this research, DBT does not outperform other modalities. It's shown to be as good in a number of cases, meaning as effective, but it doesn't really stand out. And this really goes back to my first limitation, which is the complexity of the modality and the program only nature. If DBT is equal in terms of effectiveness with other modalities, and those other modalities are easier to apply, they're more practical, they can be applied in real world settings, that makes DBT less desirable in comparison. And I think this is a real issue for this modality. If DBT was shown the research to be dramatically more effective, that would be a different thing entirely. But that's not what we're really seeing. So overall, DBT is an interesting modality. It's a modality designed to work with people that have borderline personality disorder. The research has some mixed results with a lot of it showing that DBT is effective for borderline personality disorder, but may not be as effective for other areas. So we need more research with DBT and I'll be curious to see where that research takes us in terms of this modality. I hope you found this description of DBT to be interesting. Thanks for watching.